Hey guys, and welcome to the Pixel Street Podcast, episode 60. I'm your host for today, John Hansen, joined by our newest member on the Pixel Street Podcast, Connor Cop. How you doing? Doing pretty good. How are you? I'm doing all right. Uh, Joel Campos unfortunately died in a wild gopher accident this week, so he's not here today. Uh, rest in pepperonis, Joel. Mm, but Rip. Just so you know, you can find the Pixel Street Podcast on most podcast platforms on Fridays, as well as on YouTube. You can now watch the show directly on our Facebook group by searching for Pixel Street Podcast over there. Follow us on Twitter, at Pixel Street Pod. We're three weeks in a row running right now where we have a topic of the show, which is awesome. We love the feedback. We love the topics. Keep giving them to us. We will talk about whatever if you are chosen. I've also heard, too, if you follow us on our Twitter and we hit 100 followers, we're going to give away some cool stuff. Yes, yes. At 100 followers, we will be picking someone to give away a free game. Uh, we do not know what game at the moment yet, but I we're not even halfway there yet, so we might be a bit off, but hey, let's uh, get those followers in and we can get that all sorted out. But anyway, uh, this week we will be discussing Ubisoft and Take-Two games coming that haven't been announced yet. Uh, the Division 2 raid not supporting matchmaking, and that kind of sucks. And some Game of Thrones theories for our topic of the week. Uh, first off, let's just take a look at any new games coming within the next week that we may be excited about. And, uh, you know, honestly, after Rage 2 and A Plague Tale, I don't even know off the top of my head if there's anything big coming out. Yeah, we're kind of in that dark period right now where we're just kind of waiting on E3. Nothing big's happening. No yeah. big games are releasing. It's just the little stuff that everybody's rushing to get out so it doesn't get uh, looked over before or after E3, rather. Yeah, uh, this Friday, if you're a Steven Universe fan, looks like there is a game called Steven Universe Save the Light in OKKO OK Let's Play Heroes Combo Game. That's for PS4, Xbox One, and Switch, so... I know there's a lot of people that like that show. I've never gotten into it. Ooh, the Resident Evil games are coming to Switch on Monday. That's mm. the original Resident Evil Zero, which I believe is the remake, or is that a prequel? Uh, I'm not the resident Resident Evil expert, so uh, your guess is better than mine. Okay, yeah, I haven't I haven't played that one. Uh, and then Resident Evil Four, which is a very popular Resident Evil game. I am definitely one who needs to still try that game so come in the switch i might as well uh the assassin's creed 3 remaster comes to switch the next day on um, tuesday may 21st and then oh also on tuesday everybody's golf vr so for the five people that are still hankering for more vr games there you go that's fair yeah alongside that you got the new oculus uh hardware drop in here pretty soon which is pretty exciting I will say that that thing is pretty cool. Like, no wires or anything. It's just a VR headset. And, like, yep. that's what that's one of the things VR is missing right now. It's like, I, I think they're now starting to get out more headsets that don't have wires and everything. But this one, you don't even need a computer. You just play it. And that's awesome. Yeah. It's great to see them kind of uh, evolve this hardware space and come up with some new ideas. Inside out tracking is a little difficult to do, and you have some trade outs and stuff. Uh, for not having a camera solution, uh, but I've heard really good things on it so far, and honestly, yeah, I've been considering picking one up, so uh, I'll have to come back to you on that one. Yeah, uh, it's definitely something I would like to have a chance to try out and look at, but I think it's $500. Uh, that sounds about right. I think there's a $400 version that's 64 gigabytes and a $500 version that's 128 okay. gigabytes. All right, so yeah, not too terrible, really. It's, it's about the same price as your PS4 or Xbox One when they first came out. So, exactly. I mean, if you're a fan of VR, and you, especially if you haven't got a computer that can run VR, this might be a pretty cool thing to try out. Uh, I know a lot of people have been playing uh, Beat Saber on it, and they say that it is just amazing. So that's really cool. Yeah, Beat Saber is one of those awesome things that you can just pick up on any platform where it's at and just have a load of fun with it. So glad to see that hit something else, too. All right. And then the final game I want to talk about, at least, is Team Sonic Racing releasing also on Tuesday, May 21st. Uh, I mean, say what you want about Sonic games. Uh, these Sonic Racing games are actually pretty popular, and it's the same company that worked on uh, Sonic All-Stars Racing Transformed. This time it's only Sonic characters and you have to actually like work together as a team. It doesn't matter if you come in first. 
if your teammates are like coming in like sixth and seventh, you don't win the race. It's like a whole like team aspect to it that's actually pretty different. So I'm interested to give it a try. Uh, I've always been a big Sonic fan. My brother loves Sonic, so definitely something I'll try at some point. Yeah, I'd be interested to see how that one performs with Crash Team Racing coming out next month. Uh, it's kind of Battle of the Racers, and they fill a good void on these platforms, too, because you don't have anything like Mario Kart, so uh, definitely stoked for those to drop. Yeah, uh, Team Sonic Racing originally was supposed to come out last year, and it got delayed. Uh, them sticking with this release date will be huge for them, because I believe if this came out after Crash Team Racing, it would have no chance, because it's just that whole nostalgia thing. But uh, yeah, like you said, it is kind of a battle of the mascot kart racers which is kind of <laughs> cool like i'm i'm just down for more of these like 90s kart racers give Definitely. me more uh i wrote an article a while ago about just giving me more like 90 styles 3d platformers now we're getting the kart racers and everything now let's move on the platformers like give me a mario 64 remake and just whatever yeah definitely plenty of space in the indie market for that kind of stuff yeah for sure all right, uh, moving on. I'm not sure if there were any games added the Xbox One backwards compatibility. Nope. One second. Doesn't look yeah. like there was. Nothing. Um, our free games of the month. Uh, you want to take games with gold? Sure. Uh, here in May, you can get Outcast Second Contact. Uh, today, I, I guess, is actually the last day for that. So by the time this airs, uh, you will have missed your opportunity uh, it's not same worth it anyway. with uh, Earth Defense Force, uh, and uh, the ones that will be available still are going to be Marooners, uh, all the way into the 31st, uh, Comic Jumper, which is a 360 title, all the way to the 31st, as well as the Golf Club 2019 uh, until June 15th. That's one of those crossover titles. Yeah. Cool. Uh, for Xbox Game Pass, we've covered this before, but what's available now on there is Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus, Wargroove, which I gave a shot and Connor played as well. It's a good game. Give it a try. Descenders 1.0, Surviving Mars, Tacoma, Black Desert, and For the King. Uh, by the time that this episode airs, The Surge and Lego Batman 3 will be available. So, good month for Game Pass. Best deal in gaming. Go for it. Uh... Our PlayStation Plus games are Overcooked and What Remains of Edith Finch. Really, really good indie games there. Uh, I played What Remains of Edith Finch about a, two months ago, I would say, on Game Pass. And it. I, I'm not much of a walking simulator fan. I really enjoyed that game. Uh, it's just it, super simple. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, nothing happens really, kind of. I, I don't know. Uh I just enjoyed it. Definitely give it a try. It's free. And then finally, uh, Twitch Prime, we have The Little Acre, Whispering Willows, Stealth Bastard Deluxe, which is still an awesome name, The Majesty Collection, and until September 24th, if you have Twitch Prime, you can get free a free year of Nintendo Online. We're going to keep reminding you about that, too, until you yeah. just do it. Just we do it, and we'll stop you. talking about it. We will grab your face grab your switch and smash them together until you take advantage of that deal we will do you like we did joel that's why he's not here <laughs> yeah Just remember we'll that. release the gophers <laughs> all right connor what have you been playing this week <clears throat> uh it's been a pretty slow week for me so far haven't done a whole lot of gaming uh still just riding that days gone train um guess we'll start off with that one uh days gone as i dive a little more into it this just feels so much like a game that was a much larger game at some point. I don't know what happened or uh, why it got cut, but uh, just playing so much of the game feels like they removed entire chunks of it out uh, that would have explained certain things. It, it's a very jarring experience, uh, and overall it's mostly a bummer. Um, I feel like it's a game that I very well could have enjoyed, and I'm not necessarily hating my time with it. Uh, I said last week, mechanically it's fine, uh, plays out just okay. Uh, it's really the story beats that are lacking. And um, now that it, I've played a bit more and I kind of feel that a lot of stuff was cut from it, that explains why some of the stuff isn't explained as well. There's no real tutorials for a lot of stuff. Um, it's just kind of a bummer. But uh, I'm, I'm keeping going on with that. Uh, I've been chugging along and 
Hopefully we'll be wrapping that up here pretty soon. It definitely goes on a little bit longer than I expected, which might be the reason for why it was cut down to a much shorter experience. Um, but yeah, I'll have uh, some hopefully final thoughts on it next week, if not the week after. That's cool. Yeah, uh, that is definitely one thing I've been hearing a lot about the game is that it uh, it goes on too long for its own good. Definitely. Um, I, man, I love zombie games, and I still want to give this game a try. I'm probably going to wait for it to go on sale or something, but uh, I, I, I got to figure that that's that cut content you're talking about. I mean, that's got to be to distance them from Last of Us 2 because you heard everyone talking about how Oh, is this a Last of Us 2 clone and all that? And it's obviously not. If you look at it for like 30 seconds, you realize that. But there are still those people that are like, oh, Sony can't have two zombie games releasing in the same year. Um, I I hope that I hope that they weren't just like rushed into doing it because I did hear also about quite a few bugs. But I did I did see there were a lot of. Uh, updates and everything like within the first week where they were ironing that stuff out so on the bug side have you been seeing anything lately it's pretty smooth uh, i i haven't really encountered too many issues with it um i kind of jumped on the bandwagon a little bit later than most people so i didn't catch it during that first couple weeks of launch where uh, the developers were updating it daily to kind of squash that stuff i kind of caught it after that wave uh, and from then on, for the most part, it's fine. I mean, you get the odd point where uh, you go to refill your bike with some gas from a gas can, and instead of putting it into the tank, he just puts it into the seat or into the forks uh, on the front of the bike. Uh, it's It's got some strange little oddities <laughs> there. Uh, and every now and then, some of the uh, cinematics do glitch out with some of the character models and stuff like that. But Those are always the best glitches. They they really are, yeah. Um <laughs> it's for the most part it's fine it, there's nothing really wrong with it uh the more i play it the more it feels like at some point this was on par with a game like assassin's creed odyssey uh for just pure size uh and amount of things that you can do and character choice and stuff like that uh, and it definitely hurts feeling the echoes of that stuff ripped out and i think that's just the biggest problem with it yeah it might be a case of the game was too ambitious for its own good definitely definitely yeah well like you said hopefully within a week we'll hear your final thoughts on it uh i i still as of right now what would you give it out of 10 Ooh, out of 10 hmm. up to the point that i've played i'm gonna give it a six okay so that's not bad that's a good game yeah it's it's a game worth playing at a cheap price but it has its issues yeah correct okay i got you all right, that's cool. Uh, first game I've been playing this week is Devil May Cry 3. I uh, finally got around to starting that. Uh, me and Joel have a bet going on that I won't finish the first three games by E3. I'm going to shatter that bet. Uh, and I believe you were on when I was talking about how disappointing Devil May Cry 2 was, right? Yes. This game blows that game out of the water in every way imaginable. It's... It feels so much better. The, the story is still stupid, but I like it better. Um, <laughs> it, it's just another case where, like, I was so awestruck when I played the first game. I was like, holy crap, I feel like I'm back in the early 2000s, late 90s, because it <laughs> it feels like that at all times. Uh, just, like, Dante's little movements, like, He's just like walking around. He gets by a jukebox. He tries putting on a song. It doesn't go. So he punches the top of it. He says, let's rock. And then he's fighting demons. It's like, okay. Th that's like something you would see in something like Blade, maybe. Yes. <laughs> so it's, uh, it, it, it's definitely that kind of day game. Um, and I, I enjoy it. Um, probably about six or seven missions in right now. So probably about a third of the way through. Uh, I don't know if I'll play it multiple times because I know there is a it, it does that thing with like Capcom where it gives you a score after you complete in each mission so it's kind of an incentive to go back and play through again like use no items take less damage put out a, dun a bunch of damage collect this many red orbs just kind of like little checklists um, probably not something I'm going to focus on there might 
I've kind of seen hints that there might be like a second campaign playthrough. Uh, they had that in two as well, where you played as the girl in the story, but it didn't really add anything, and I just grinded through that in a day. So hopefully, uh, if there is an extra campaign, that is worth my time. But I'll definitely look into it. Now, how would you say this compares to the first one? We already know your thoughts on the second, but how does it line up with the first? Uh, of the ones I've played so far, I've only played the first three now. Um, it's definitely the best of the first three. Uh, the first one... I enjoyed it did feel a little stiff at times um and I wasn't it did the same thing uh I remember when I was a kid and I first played the first Resident Evil I was lost in the mansion like I had no idea what I was doing it kind of had those moments where I was like okay I've got this item what do I do with it and I would have to look up a guide maybe I just don't pay attention enough or something but that kind of bugged me I haven't had any of that in three so far um it it's just a well put together game really uh the level design it's it's narrow but not claustrophobic um uh, there are moments where it feels more like a god of war or kingdom hearts like hack and slash game like they really want to like push you to uh do different combos and everything and get your score up real high but there are times when I'm like, I don't need to. I can just keep slashing them with my sword, and it knocks them down, and I hit them while they're down. So, like, it, there's no point to, like, going on and building up my score, really. Uh, so I wish that was a little more fleshed out. Hopefully that's something they fix in the future games. Yeah, definitely. I'm uh, interested to hear your thoughts as you kind of close out the third one here. Uh, it sounds like you had a pretty rough time with the second one, so... Uh, seeing you kind of end one on a high note uh, will be exciting. Yeah, that would be nice. Uh, the plan is to finish it by the next time we record. All right, uh, so you've also been watching your fiance play some Uncharted. I have. Uh, she is actually playing them for the very first time. Uh, she has never played the Uncharted games ever before. She never had a PS4. Uh, she's not a very hardcore gamer, uh, especially before she met me. Um, but she's getting there. She's definitely trying. Uh, and so she's picked these up for the first time on my recommendation as they're one of my favorite series of all time. Uh, and it's been an absolute blast watching her play them. Um, her favorite games of all time are the Tomb Raider games, the newer ones. She hasn't played too many of the older ones. Uh, and so I kind of gave this to her as something I thought would be a natural leeway to guide her into some other games. And uh, she's wrapped up the first game. And her thoughts on that game are that uh, it is complete and utter garbage uh she just was not a huge fan of the first one um uh, looking back at it the shooting is very difficult uh, not a lot of aim assist it kind of comes from that era of uh games are for the hardcore gamer crowd um mm -hmm. which isn't necessarily a bad thing it's still a, a good game and definitely worth playing for the story setup but uh watching her kind of struggle her way through that as somebody who doesn't play a lot of video games um, I can definitely see how frustrating that could be uh, for most uh, people like that. So yeah, uh, for that's sure. been a treat. <clears throat> uh, Naughty Dog always does. They they do have a history of giving out those games that are really socially revered. Like everyone yes. acknowledges just how good they are. But for the person that ha doesn't play a lot of games, like even back in the day, the Crash Bandicoot games, those are hard games. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. I mean, you look at uh, the remasters that just came out not too long ago for the Crash Insane trilogy, uh, and some of those levels, I mean, granted, the new games have altered physics and whatnot, but uh, they are still ass-kickingly hard at times, and mm -hmm. uh, the Uncharted games are definitely no different. Um, she's now on her way through the second one. Uh, I would wager that she's about halfway through, maybe a little over halfway through, uh, and the only thing I can think during this whole playthrough is, oh my god, this game is so long. Uh, it is taking her forever to beat it. And it's not that she's doing horribly and just failing all the time. It is just a very, very long single-player game, uh, which is weird to see nowadays, because single-player games, I mean, campaigns are for a Call of Duty or a Battlefield are, what, four or five hours at most? Mm -hmm. uh, and so this is taking her a significantly uh, longer time and... Uh, but this one she's having a great time with. She's loving this one. Says it's much, much better. Uh, the gameplay is much smoother. The shooting and everything uh, she's got a much better handle on. So 
Uh, excited to keep watching her make her way through those and hopefully get to four, which I think is the best in the series. Yeah. Uh, I did just look it up on howlongthebeat.com, and they say that the main story for Uncharted 2 Among Thieves takes about ten and a half hours to beat. So, yeah, that is a pretty lengthy game, especially for, like, a game made during the PS3 days. If it's yes. not an RPG, like a linear game, that's that's pretty long. Um, yeah, man, I I've got to get back into finishing that because I I uh, I bought the Nathan Drake collection for my PS4, and that's I, how she's playing. Yeah, I played I played through the first one, and uh, we I was telling you before we recorded that it it just existed for me. Um, I'm a really yep. huge fan of the Tomb Raider reboots. I never played the originals, but. Tomb Raider Definitive Edition, Rise of the Tomb Raider, some of my favorite games this generation. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was a bit disappointing to me, but it was still a fine game. Um, so everyone was like telling me, oh, you have to play Uncharted. And it just, uh, my experience from the first one was just like, okay, this is fine. Uh, if It definitely wouldn't be something that, if it were released brand new tomorrow, it wouldn't be a game that I pick up for $60. But yeah. it, I, I saw it for what it was. It was a it was a good starting point, I would say. Yeah, definitely the the series just progresses uh, as you kind of go through the different titles. Uh, you can definitely tell how Naughty Dog kind of came into their own and really stepped up their game as a studio and kind of became that studio that is the Last of Us studio. Um, absolutely phenomenal. It's very good stuff. Uh, you should definitely check out more, and I'll I'll definitely keep updating you with her thoughts on it. So. Hopefully it uh, kind of spurs you into playing them too. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, definitely something I have on my list. All right, next up. I did it, Connor. Oh, no, what did you do? I went back to playing Overwatch. Oh, gosh. Uh, I need to call your parents for an intervention again. <laughs> okay, so I think we should preface this that uh, uh, you and me, we played a bunch of overwatch together back in the day we did uh, yes we played a lot together we had a group that we'd rolled together uh since then everyone's kind of gone their own way they've got other games to play they're obsessed with smite of all things and <laughs> we play apex hey, every now and then you leave smite alone okay smite did nothing to you oh i'm sorry to offend your smoot um oof oof <laughs> nah it, it's a fine game um so yeah i've been the last few seasons been playing alone just trying the solo queue and everything and man this community is just so bad i still love this game i love the characters i love blizzard's design i i just love the way it works together but god the people in this community are just so awful so many throwers so many people leaving early and you know very well if you lose one person in a competitive game well you might as well just not play the rest just, of the game yeah your chances to win just hit the tank Yes. Um, man, I I know there's a lot of talk about some uh, uh, roll lock features coming in the future, but I feel like that's been talked about for so long now. The bl- uh, the Blizzard devs, like, they're just so quiet about everything anymore. They don't really yes. communicate what's happening until it happens, and that's really disappointing. The third year anniversary is coming up here really soon like it's gotta be like within a couple weeks here so i'm hoping that we get something here but man just anymore they've kind of lost me I, and still i i love this game still and i would love to play it more i've put hundreds and hundreds of hours into it but man it's i i played earlier and i played three competitive games and all three uh the first game had a guy leave my team after the first fight second game Guy left the other guy's team after the first fight, so we won, but still, that's not a fun game. And then third game, a guy on my team leaves after the first round. So it's just like... Eh. And these are long games. Like, they usually take about 15, 20 minutes. So it's just it's just a waste of time, and it's not worth the headache anymore. Yeah, it's kind of... It, it became a frustrating entity for me uh, quite some time ago, you're you're absolutely right the community is pretty toxic and i think that some of that is fostered from the fact that 
Blizzard hasn't been very transparent lately. It seems like, and this is probably totally not true, but it seems like Overwatch is um, almost dying. I, I don't want to use that term because it's definitely not right. Overwatch is doing very well with the Overwatch League uh, mm -hmm. and all of the other things going on. And they just put out that, um, uh, what, what is it? It's like the game editor mode. The workshop. Uh, yes, yes. And that's phenomenal. The stuff that I see come out of there is absolutely incredible. Uh, it, it almost makes me want to jump back in just to try some of that stuff out. Um, but I think that a lot of that stuff is just spurred on by the fact that the developers aren't really talking about it. They're not doing a whole lot, and it kind of makes players feel like maybe this isn't their main focus anymore. Um, yeah. In I don't know. It's it's just in a weird place. I would love to see Overwatch make a comeback and try to figure out this toxicity problem, which, to be frank, this is an issue that they've had for a long, long time. Oh, yeah, uh, for sure. Know. So we'll see what they do. Uh, just to, to throw an anecdote on there, the three-year anniversary of Overwatch is actually next week. Okay, so yeah, the, the anniversary event should be coming right around then. Yeah, um, one thing I will say, though, is uh, Blizzard did say that they were laying pretty low uh, this year, most of the major events, they didn't have a lot going on. So uh, I'm curious to see where that goes. Yeah. Uh, you brought up the workshop thing. And when they announced that, I, I thought, okay, that sounds awesome. Give the community things to work on. And there have been some awesome things. If you follow any Overwatch community or fan page or anything, they put up constant links and everything, or the codes to check out these awesome games. Like today I saw a 2D Snake game on there. Oh, like, wow. Who like that doesn't matter in the end scheme in the end scheme of things, but hey, someone did that in Overwatch, so it's really cool. But at the end of the day, it just kind of feels like they've turned their back on the real problems of the game. Like they're yes. just not focusing on the big things. Yeah, which to be fair, I mean they are tough problems to tackle. It's something oh, yeah. that a lot of games struggle with. So I don't know what the answer necessarily is, but uh, I definitely feel your frustration. Yeah, for sure. But hopefully within a week or so, we'll get a developer update and we can hear about some new anti-toxicity plans. But until then, is there anything else you've been playing this week? Not really. Uh, it's been a pretty dry week for me, just kind of taking some quiet time. The weather's getting much nicer up here, so uh, we've been kind of branching out a little more and exploring the outside so that I'm not so horribly pale uh, anymore. Um, but other than that, no, we're uh, pretty quiet on the game's front. Uh, anything else for you? Uh, definitely let me know what it's like to not be pale. Uh, <laughs> but I've been playing some more Yoshi's Crafted World. Uh, this game came mm. out in March, and I played it for a bit then. And uh, right off the bat, I, I really liked it. Um, last year, Kirby's Star Allies, I believe it's called, uh, that released, and I was really excited for it, but I was kind of let down. It was just too easy of a game and it just really wasn't fun it kind of felt like yes. a waste of time and i played through it and everything and i like kirby and it just didn't really feel like it was worth my time by by the time that i finished it so i was kind of disappointed in it and uh as we got closer to yoshi's crafted world i kind of had that sneaking feeling that this would be the same thing because it's set up very similarly uh and at the end of the day it is a very easy game but it has a lot more charm than the Kirby game did, I believe. Uh, I, I really like the aspect of throwing your egg behind you or in front of you where you can't really see stuff. Uh, I like the whole flipping and going back through courses in reverse so you see like the back of all the crafted items. You see like the tape and everything holding it together. Like It's just that little Nintendo charm that you just don't see from many developers and I really enjoy that aspect of it uh, I'm probably about six or seven hours in and I'm I'm not sure how close I am to being done but uh, I enjoy it uh, mostly my switch is used for games when I'm just laying down at night I'm watching YouTube and I'll just grab my switch play some smash or something but lately it's been Yoshi and it's just an enjoyable game yeah, that's one I, I've definitely been wanting to pick up. I've got a copy sitting uh, pretty close to me, actually, and I've been thinking about playing it. I love all of the, like, 
yarn crafty games that Nintendo's been coming out with. I don't know if mm-hmm. you played Yoshi's Woolly World on the Wii U. I did not have a Wii U. Oh, that game was fantastic. I uh, super, super love that one. Uh, it was an absolute blast. Um, I've heard this one's phenomenal too, so definitely be checking it out in the future. Yeah, it's very good. Um, obviously, I didn't play Woolly World, so I can't speak on that, but I would say this is my favorite Yoshi game since Yoshi's Island for the Super Nintendo. That is high praise. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm not saying it's better than that Yoshi game, but it's the best since then. Okay. Um, but it it's definitely enjoyable. I like it. Okay, so let's move on to the news. First up on the news, Starbreeze is in a little bit of trouble here, Connor. You want to take that away? Oh, man. Yeah, Starbreeze. Um they have not been doing well for a while, it seems, uh, and this is just kind of the latest in that story. Uh, they recently published a earnings report, uh, sorry, financial report for Q1 of 2019, uh, and they've revealed some very, very heavy losses. Uh, and they've basically said, if we can't find some sort of funding for the next 12 months, uh, we're closing within that next 12 months and liquidating our IP. Um, to be honest, I'm not super, super surprised with this happening. Um, they seem like they've been having some tough time for a while. Uh, their overkill game uh, that they had coming out, The Walking Dead, uh, one got canceled not too long ago and is withdrawn from Steam. Um, they went through this huge like studio reconstruction in December uh, of 2018, and they just have not been doing very well for some time. So... Uh, definitely a sad thing to see happen as I really enjoyed the payday games uh, when they were being well supported um, but to be honest with just how things have been happening and the news that has come out of that company uh, I'm not horribly surprised yeah no, same here um, I only played payday 2 for like one night I think um, and it was fine but uh, that's been like I mean, that feels like that's been their only moneymaker for, like, the last five, six years, right? Basically, yeah. I mean, they they don't really have any other big IPs that they've been doing a really good job of supporting. Um, Everybody was really excited about the Walking Dead game coming up, and that was basically just, like, a uh, Payday 2 reskin, essentially. And uh, it seems like they just keep reusing and regurgitating those assets for different things. But it's underneath the hood, it's all Payday 2. Yeah, and, and everything I was hearing from that is it just wasn't a good game on Steam when it was there. And then, yeah, uh, eventually the console version just kept getting delayed, and uh, Skybound's like, okay, no, the, you get, we don't like the reviews that we're getting for the Walking Dead game. Uh, we're pulling support. And so they had to cancel the console and then pull it from Steam, and that's a big deal, especially yes. for how long they've been working on those games. Uh, no, that... I'm actually surprised that they didn't go out of business closely after that. Um, I, I do have to give it to give some credit to the CEO for keeping them alive this long. Uh, not too long ago, I know they did uh, sell the System Shock license. Like they they had that, and they were working on uh, System Shock Three, which would have been a big deal for them, I think. But obviously now they don't have it because they had to stay afloat. So. That's yeah, no only longer that, in there. They uh, went ahead and sold out one of their other studios too. Yes, um, uh, Druva Interactive. They just sold to Rockstar. Uh, I believe the number was hot ah, crap. I closed my tab on it. Uh, I believe it was like seven point eight million dollars. So hopefully they don't have to sell off too much more, and they can get something going. I think what would uh, really ha- they they've got to get away. I'm. I mean, no, they don't have to get away from Payday. They have to get something besides Payday to get them some money because they can't rely on Payday 2 to just constantly give them revenue. See, it's interesting that you say that because the statements that came from the CEO talking about how uh, they need to find some other kind of um, income or so for the next year, uh, he directly labels Payday 2 as part of their success plan for the next 12 months and trying to figure out how to stay afloat as a company. So... Uh, well, I, I mean, wouldn't that, be surprised if we like were... we said, that is their only big money getter at the moment. Right. But I'm saying, like down in the in the future, like I know it just recently came out on Switch. I can't imagine they're getting a ton of money from that, but whatever. I I have no idea. Uh, but like from for me, that's got to be like okay, we have an idea for a game. It's gonna knock it out of the park. We we have 
they have to go all in on a new game i think definitely that's that's what i think uh i think payday 2 will help them stay afloat along with selling these uh studios and ips but for them to succeed they need another game yeah i'd be interested to see what happens here overkill has at least had some decent success uh with games in the past that's one of their studios under the star breeze umbrella um mm-hmm. I just don't know. Uh, this close to it, it doesn't seem like the future is very bright for them. So we'll have to stay tuned on that one. All right. All right. So next up, uh, Splinter Cell got a troll leak on Twitter by one of the creative directors for Ubisoft, uh, Julian Garrity, I believe is how you spell it. Uh, he's the creative director on The Division 2, and yesterday he got on Twitter and he was hanging out with some of his other uh, um, creative dir- director friends at uh, Ubisoft and posted a couple pictures said, working on the next Splinter Cell with Dan Haynow and at Rom Kamer and Lion. I, mean, I don't know. Uh, can't wait for E3. Crossover with the crew too with Fergus. Only missing Ghost Recon and Rainbow Six game but on their way. Far Cry. For Honor. The Division 2. Rainbow Six. Ghost Recon. Uh uh, Ubisoft would later come out later on in the day and said, uh, yeah, no, guys, that's that's not an announcement for Splinter Cell. That's an obvious joke. So probably a lot of people upset about that. Uh, Splinter Cell is probably their most requested game at the moment. It's been a while since we saw a Splinter Cell game, and there's been a lot of talk about them from the Walmart leak last year saying there was a Splinter Cell game coming to... Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Sam Michael Fisher. Ironside. But Sam Fisher is the guy, right? The yes, character? yes. Uh, him showing up in Ghost Recon Wildlands and them bringing back Michael Ironside, and then uh, also like just nods to it in like Far Cry and everything. So uh, uh, this definitely was not the best moves for them. Uh, I think this kind of gives Ubisoft a little bit of a black eye. Uh, because people don't like being trolled like this, especially from someone in power who would know about this if it's fake. Not only that, I mean, this is such a big franchise. It's got such a huge opportunity to make a comeback. I just don't see why joking about this is uh, even remotely okay. Like, I get it, funny, haha, but uh, just give the people what they want. Give us, give us some new Splinter Cell. They recently did the uh, uh, 4K kind of remaster for the backwards compatible version of Splinter Cell Conviction. Uh, Mm -hmm. on the xbox one and that is great i jumped into there and played a little bit of that just to see how it looked uh and it really made me want another splinter cell game um i can't imagine that all of this hype uh, especially with the sam fisher mission and wildlands michael ironside coming back to voice um the walmart leak that proved everything else to be true yeah every uh, single other thing on there was true exactly i there's no way that there's not something here Uh, Mm -hmm. And maybe they're just poking a little fun at that. I mean, Ubisoft doesn't have a great history of keeping secrets anyway. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) In fact, they've kind of taken an approach of just quietly announcing everything inside of other things. Um, Supposedly, the next Assassin's Creed has some kind of hint into the the Division 2. We've seen several other games kind of teased or hinted at in Ubisoft titles. And uh, I think that maybe this just continues that narrative. Uh, I would love it to. Maybe we're just chasing the wind here, but um, I guess we'll find out soon. I really hope uh, it's yeah, a new I, one. I definitely agree with Yeah, I, I really think that there is one coming, uh, just for all the points you just made. Um, it's just There's just too much there for them not to make one, definitely. especially with it being one of their biggest franchises. So at some point it's coming. Um, the thing that does kind of worry me is that an Ubisoft rep came and said that that was a joke. So I kind of do wonder if it won't be at E3 this year. And if it's not, I think that will be a bad move on everyone's part at Ubisoft, really, if they're making it and they don't show something. Like, like literally, all they have to do is just show a logo and people will be happy. Say, hey, this is coming. We're making it. We're not ready to show anything, but please be excited, that kind of thing. And People will be excited. It's the whole Metroid Prime 4 thing again. Just just knowing that it's coming is good enough. People will be patient if they know it's coming. Yeah, and it's kind of the height of the hype right now. So it's the perfect time to just say anything about it. 
uh, the Ubisoft rep coming out and saying something about it um, it doesn't worry me, worries me as much. I mean, that's the PR manager's job is to kind of renounce stuff like this before it's ready. So I get it, uh, maybe covering their butts a little bit. Um, but I, it just feels like it's here. It feels like it's happening. I hope it is. If not, uh, we're going to find them. Yeah, I, I've never played any Splinter Cell, but uh, for for the fans of the series, I do hope that it's coming. Uh, in other Ubisoft news, they did announce that there are four AAA gay <laughs> triple a games coming before march 31st 2020 one of those is uh ghost recon uh breakpoint help me. breakpoint there we go and then the other three games are all unannounced so uh just want to take this little, oh and also want to point out skull and bones got delayed again it won't be at e3 this year all they said that is it is not coming in 2019 but uh of those three Three unannounced AAA games, Connor. What do you think are coming? Mm, that's a tough one. Uh, trying to figure out what's there. Um, of course, the easy answer here is Splinter Cell. Yep, Splinter uh, Cell. I agree there. There has to be something there. I wonder if maybe we get the Beyond Good and Evil uh, prequel uh, this year. It seems like something that would be smart to hold out till next gen, but also just as likely to launch right at the end of this gen. So. But that's um, also something that's been announced. That's so, true. That's true. So uh, we haven't that gotten tells a date me that they're yet, not though. expecting it to come this year. That's fair. That's fair. Um, out from there, I, I don't really know what else. Probably a Just Dance game, I would imagine, is definitely oh, on that yeah. list. We get Just Dance oh, every that'll year. That'll be disappointing. <sighs> you know what's going to happen, though. It, it is. Has to. It, it is. But I really hope that, because we know that that game gets yearly installments, I really hope that's not one that they're including in this. Oh. I would imagine. It's always a huge earner it, for them. It's... Yeah, no, you're right. But, oh, I didn't think about that. That would be. <laughs> Sorry to crush uh, your spirits. Uh, that's painful. Uh, Watch Dogs 3 is on there i believe oh yeah there's, that's there's a been guess. a few leaks about that taking place in london i believe yeah i've seen those um that that could definitely be coming this october um i you know the last has it been the last two years that ubisoft has gotten a nintendo property we had mario and rabbits and then last year starlink had a uh, fox in it yes i would really like another game because uh I mean, both of those games have been received very well. I know Starlink hasn't done well, but that's mostly because it's a Toys to Life game. Everyone really loved the Star Fox missions in that. And so yeah. I I really wouldn't be surprised if we got another just off-the-wall game from them. Uh, I mean, something like an F-Zero game from them. Like, that'd be cool. I don't I don't know what we would get, but just something like that. Well, and that begs the question too. Uh, you know, what if if you were to hand Ubisoft a Nintendo property and say, "Make a video game with this property," what would it be? I mean, you would kind of say the same thing when they handed him Mario. They they gave him Mario, and they're like, "Okay, but he can't jump." And they're like, "Oh, okay, fine. We'll make this XCOM game," and it was received very well, even with the rabbits in there and people and those. Uh, and the cover art leaking beforehand and everyone's like, Oh no, this is awful. This is terrible. When the game finally came out, we saw the developer crying because Shigeru Miyamoto was talking about his game and just, it just went all up from there. Uh, I really think that Ubisoft, they are just on such a good streak right now with pretty yes. much all of their games. So uh, it, uh, I, I really think I, I would have, the utmost confidence in them handle handling really any uh nintendo property if they handled fox and mario they can handle any of them yeah i would love to see them touch some of the nintendo properties that they haven't really done much with lately uh maybe even the they give them the keys to the star fox kingdom and say hey starlink was great those missions were great let's make yeah. a star fox spinoff or something and that would be it's, super especially cool with how uh poor receiving the Star Fox Wii U game was uh, zero, right. I think. Um, yeah, uh, that, I mean, everyone was really excited for that, and no one, there hasn't really been any excitement for Star Fox since then, except for those missions in Starlink. So, I, yeah, I, I think that would be awesome if they just made a full Star Fox game. Yeah, definitely a, a developer that has the pedigree for something like that, too. So, I guess we'll have to wait and see. I mean, e is just around the corner, so... Um, oh, and hopefully excited. most of those we get there yeah 
for sure. Uh, finishing up our Ubisoft talk here, uh, the Division 2 raid will not support matchmaking. Uh, so this is by Matt Perslow of IGN. The Division 2's upcoming Dark Hours raid will require pre-made teams of eight players despite Ubisoft promising matchmaking for all the game's activities. Talking to a fan on Twitter, Alexandre... No, no, I have no idea how to say that. Uh, who works as part of the Division 2's marketing team said, There is no matchmaking. You have to team up through clan lists, their friends list, or by inviting other players in the game. Social spaces before you launch the raid. Um, so yeah, there was a uh, marketing thing earlier this year before the game released, I believe, that was saying, Hey everything in this game will have matchmaking in it and now they're just springing the, this on us that there isn't any matchmaking uh it's not in this article but i will point out that one of the ubisoft reps did come out and say this is why uh we we want this raid experience to be good for everyone so we really wanted uh people to talk together and who know how to work together and everything because if you're just randomly going in with random people i mean uh, let's talk about Overwatch again. Like just going in with randoms, it's it's always hit and miss on whether you're gonna have a good experience or not. So they really were anchoring on that, which I think is a good angle to go at. But eight people is a lot of people to get together at the same time and do a raid that you've got to expect takes at least an hour, right? So the the my thoughts on this are that it fucking sucks. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I'm not going to sugarcoat that at all. I just don't understand. One of my favorite things about The Division 2 for the entire time that I played it, uh, and I still jump in from time to time, was that they had an incredibly well-built matchmaking system uh, that did such a good job of just matching with you with people around the same level, same gear and everything. And uh, if not, if it couldn't find those people, it would go ahead and just... Uh, kind of equalize you guys and bring you near the same level so that you could still enjoy the content together. And to see them kind of abandon that for what is supposed to be the pent-ultimate activity uh, in this game, it's just a bummer. It just sucks. Uh, I played a lot of Destiny back in the day, and those have six-man raids. And you're right. You're absolutely right. Getting that many people together is a huge pain in the ass. And in Destiny, it's only six people. And in Division 2, you, you're you expected to get eight people together. I don't even know that I have eight people in my clan uh, right. on the Division 2. And, and so this is just frustrating. I, I just don't understand why you would backtrack on something uh, that you would promise to the community already. Um, go ahead. I, I completely agree with you. This does suck. Uh, uh, I haven't played since Tier 4. Five world released and I, I beat that uh not the raid the stronghold there and I'm like okay I'm good until the raid comes out right. now with this news I really don't have any reason to go back to it because regularly I was playing with one person that whole time and then I would match make for the other two slots yeah I'm in a clan that probably has at least eight people but I don't know any of them um right it's not really Hey, I'm I'm not going to just pop on one day and they're going to be like, oh, hey, we don't know you. Come join us on this raid. Um, yeah, no, I it, I would have been cool with them just saying, hey, at the beginning here, we really want you and your friends to do it. Like they've been talking about uh, the first team to finish the uh, raid will have like a plaque and a picture of them displayed in the White House for everyone to see, which is really awesome. Right. I, I think it would have been cool if they would have been like, yeah, uh, the first week you can only play with your friends or everything else after that week we're bringing in uh matchmaking and you can just get a group together on the go which at the end of the day they could still do that i think there's definitely a chance of it with just how negative a reception people are getting from this news because uh, yeah you're you just nailed it right on the head uh this news sucks like I, someone that I really enjoy the division, I really enjoy the division too. And I would like to put more time into the raid because it's something new for me to go there and play. But with this kind of news, like it, it's not even worth the time. And it's, and who knows? It's something that could be completely out of my, uh, out of my, uh, 
out of my way there. I I don't have enough people to get eight people to play this. Yeah, not only is that frustrating, but the only thing this does is promotes external matchmaking um, programs or or whatever you want to call it, where yeah, you know LFTs. somebody's exactly somebody's going to create a website where you can find other people or just add links to already made websites out there where you can just find more people for this. And so, yes, there is a way to do it, but I shouldn't have to. Uh, for a game that's done such a good job of responding to all of Destiny's mishaps uh, and mistakes that they've made throughout the years, uh, it's so weird to watch them just go ahead and screw something up that Destiny just fails to rectify over time. I understand the reasoning. I get what the purpose is, but it's just an unrealistic expectation that makes for a poor uh, player experience for casual players. This kind of gatekeeps the higher tier stuff to people that are very hardcore and have a ton of friends to play. And then more casual people like you or somebody who only gets to play a few times a week, they don't have that community around them to play them uh, to play this with uh, and to kind of carry them through. And so they're just left in the cold. Your average player is not going to go LFG. They're not going to jump online and find other people that way. Uh, they just want to be able to play it in game. And uh, it's really just a big bummer to watch people get left out like this. Yeah, uh, they obviously won't release the numbers unless it's a really good number for them, but I would be interested to see just how many people do play the raid, like how many groups, yeah. because you got to figure after this news that there's going to be people that just don't even update the game out of spite. Yeah, I, it just sucks. It just fucking sucks. It, it really does suck. Um. Like I was saying, uh, Ubisoft is on a really good run with their games right now, but this is definitely one of the few step backs for them, I would say. Yeah, we'll have to see how this shakes out. I mean, I, I was very excited for the rest of the content, and the raid especially. Um, I just, with this news, it kind of sours it in my mouth, and um, oh, yeah, for sure. I, I don't know how soon I'll return. Same. Uh, all right. Uh, next up, uh, just a little quick side note here. Take two have unannounced games coming before the end of 2019. Uh, they didn't say how many or anything, but just kind of want to take this time out to guess. What do you think's coming from them? What What could we see announced from them possibly at E3? <clears throat> Man, I would really love to see another Bioshock, but I just don't oh, see baby. it happening. You speak in my language. I really <laughs> hope so. I really hope so. It would be great to see it. Um. I, I just I don't I don't think it's gonna happen and that's that's the crappy thing. Um knowing there was, that there was uh oh, one second. I've gotta put this all together in my mind. I remember there was a, they had two studios that essentially were working right next to each other and like one of the projects was secret for them and then like they would like grab people and like they weren't telling the people in the in their company like hey this is what the secret project is there was rumors that they were working on a bioshock obviously this is all just hearsay and i who knows what's going on with that uh but yeah i would really love a new bioshock yeah i mean it's it's definitely time especially in a place where the industry has kind of hit this roadblock with single player games where everybody wants them but nobody's making them um at least not a lot of people have, are making them at this point. Uh, I would love to see something like this release, and I feel like there's a really good spot in the market for it with a huge potential to make some money. Um, mm -hmm. The problem, though, is the odds are against it. Uh, did, did they say how many titles? Uh, they did. They, they, okay. All they said was Take Two have unannounced games coming before the end of 2019. Right, which I know that uh, they haven't announced this year's WWE yet. Or God, NBA. no, yeah, so, God, you're really breaking my heart here uh, with this stuff. You gotta temper those expectations, uh, man, it's yeah. every year with this, you know. But uh, we know NBA, we know WWE, we know Borderlands. I mean, there's always the chance, I, I know there's been rumblings about a, a new Bully game, or maybe a remaster. I, I think that would be, uh, there's a chance for that. Um, Who knows, though, with with uh, Rockstar so gung ho on Red Dead Redemption and Grand Theft Auto Five, like who knows if there's even a chance for that? But they could always just get a different studio to work on. I mean, Take Two is a big company. You know, looking at it too, I'm kind of rolling through a list of their IPs that they have. 
uh, right now. And um, one of the ones that kind of piques my interest is a Rockstar title that was announced quite some years ago uh, that from time to time they keep saying that they're working on. Uh, it's called Agent. I don't know if you remember. I, I think that did get officially canceled. Oh, at did one it? Point. I, I will look it up, though. Uh, keep going. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a lot of potential here. They've got a lot of stuff in the works, and I don't think that Rockstar would have anything else on their plate, especially with, uh, you know, Red Dead just launching and Red Dead Online finally hitting its full release instead of being in beta. Um, it's just, uh, it's it's weird. We're in a weird place where uh, it's most studios are kind of waiting till next generation. Uh, we might see mm-hmm. some stuff rushed out here by the end of this year, but so close to next gen, I just don't know that we're going to see a lot of big stuff hit. Um, we'll see. A- a- any on your list that you think uh, could make it? Well, uh, first of all, uh, last November, uh, Rockstar did abandon the agent trademark, so they don't have the oh. trademark for that anymore. Uh, but on my list, uh, I mean, Bioshock is number one for me. Uh, that that series is one of my favorites of all time. I love everything about it. Um, would really enjoy the Go Back to Rapture or a different reality for Bioshock Infinite. Uh, I, just anything set in a Bioshock world, I would be absolutely in love with. But you know, I I'd, I'd really like to see them do something different. Um, I don't. Let's see, because Take Two, they own XCOM, but XCOM 2 came out just a couple years ago, right? Yep. Yeah, that so one's I, been out for I, a I don't, bit. So there's a chance there, but I don't really see a new one coming out of that soon. We could see uh, another Mafia game. Mafia 3 did pretty well for them. Uh, might see another in that series. Uh, I feel like that's too close, though. That was like two years ago, right? I want to say it was a little bit longer than that. I, I'm not uh, sure. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's really up to anyone's guess. Uh I don't know where they would show it at E3 or anything. They Take Two doesn't really have a presence at E3, do they? I don't think so. No. Usually, I feel like their conference is kind of wrapped into uh, somebody else. Generally, yeah. PlayStation. Yeah, you're right. Um, no, I. Well, PlayStation's not even there this year. Um, yep. I don't know. Uh, just hearing though that there's unannounced games from them has me excited because I do like uh, Take Two games. So. All right, Final, finally on our news, the Super Mario Maker 2 Nintendo Direct happened today. Uh, did you happen to watch it at all? I did not, but I do have a recap here. All right, uh, give me that recap because I missed it. Uh, yeah, so it's looking like it's going to be a pretty beefy sequel to the first one. Um, they're adding all kinds of new functions and features and stuff, which is to be expected. I mean, it's it's nothing too crazy. Uh, most importantly, we got a release date. We knew that it was going to launch in June, uh, but we now know for certain that it is going to be June 28th. Um, there's a single player mode. There's some new blocks and stuff, some new, new uh, creative skins and whatnot. There's also online multiplayer, uh, which the first one had that as well. Um, I'm interested to see how this works on Switch as the Super Mario Maker on Wii U and 3DS was kind of a pain to find other levels and download other people's levels. You get to get like the specific level codes and stuff like that. And um, it's just a weird, awkward system. So I'd like to see them kind of flesh that out a little bit more Uh, as well as there's co-op mode, uh, which is, I do believe returning. Uh, The first one had that as well. Um, Yeah. I mean, nothing too crazy. Uh, I I guess most significantly here, uh, the fact that they're adding a single player mode to it, uh, is pretty cool. To me, this just feels like they're getting it out of the way uh, of E3 so that they can announce bigger and more important things here um, next month. That's definitely uh, the right move for them, I think, because this is definitely one of the games I'm most excited for within the next month or two, uh, but that's also because there's not a lot. Uh, like I said earlier, I never had a Wii U, so I would just watch videos on the original Mario Maker, and it. I mean, I love Mario, and I mean, who doesn't? And just being a, I'm I'm not a very creative person, so I don't see myself making any levels. But I would just love to play through other people's levels, and that's what really appeals to me. I think. Yeah. Uh, the, so, sorry, I'm just catching up on notes on the last part of this. 
Uh, during that direct, there was actually another small announcement that they added inside of it. Um, it's a new voucher program uh, that they added to the Nintendo Switch online uh, service. So if you have online, uh, you can spend $100 flat, uh, and it comes with two digital vouchers. Uh, those digital vouchers are good uh, for um, any selection of, of Nintendo games for Switch. Uh, they're not very specific uh, on if that's going to be strictly Nintendo titles or third-party titles. Uh, for my guess, just Nintendo titles. Um, but basically, uh, this allows you to be able to buy two copies of a game uh, for you and a friend, uh, say like Mario Maker 2, uh, or Super Mario Odyssey, so you guys can play co-op together, and you save 20 bucks off the two of them. So, kind of a cool little thing there inside of that. Um, not something I saw talked about a lot, but uh, just a quick note on that. Yeah, it's a little bit of saving money there. That's cool. Uh, I do want to point out, I'm, I'm reading through this article here, and it looks like there will be a multiplayer mode in here. Like, not just, like, downloading other people's maps. Like, it'll be a... Like, it's four people racing through uh, random levels to see who can beat it first. And that sounds really cool. Yeah, the first one was great. Uh, there was a lot of great tools and stuff in there for creating levels. And uh, just being able to play things that other people made was awesome as well. Um, this is this is a no-brainer. I mean, making a second one with all the tools and uh, properties that are here, the, the possibilities are endless. And I think it's a definite pickup for me. Um, Oh, yeah. super stoked. Uh, as soon as I can, this will be one that I pre-order on my Switch. All right, that's all I've got to say on Mario Maker 2. How about you? Yeah, I mean, uh, not much else to talk about. Like I said, I mean, it really feels like Nintendo's just kind of paving the path to E3. Yeah, and, and, I'm, and real quick, I am all for that. It gives them more time to focus on Luigi's Mansion, Animal Crossing, and Pokemon, so... Oh, yes. Go for it. And any other games that we don't even know about. Uh, all right. So that brings us to our topic of the show. Like I said at the beginning here, this is our third week running with a uh, listener request. This week, from our very own Connor Cop's fiance, Rachel Smith, she wants to know our Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones ending theories. So there's one episode left in the series. Uh, that's this Sunday. So if you haven't watched this or if you haven't watched this season and you don't want to be spoiled, turn away now, but still give us a like, share us and everything. Give us topics for next week and uh, uh, send a eulogy to Joel's Twitter at Campo 63. Um, so I haven't watched the final season yet. Uh, I just don't have HBO, but I've kind of gotten a good idea from people on social media talking about it. Uh, so you've been really into watching Game of Thrones. Uh, let me hear some theories on how you think it's going to end here. Yeah, so every Sunday we actually all gather up at my dad's house uh, for Game of Thrones night. So we've been watching this pretty religiously uh, for this final season. Um, jumping through it, uh, and I will say right here, right now, John already gave you the warning. Uh, if you are still listening, turn the podcast off if you're not caught up and you don't want spoilers. Because uh, we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. Um, up to this point, uh, it's been a pretty wild season. Um, definitely some controversy of things happening, uh, that people didn't think would happen that are kind of character breaking, uh, that stuff aside. Um, my hope is that John ends up on the throne. Uh, and I think that the way this is going to happen is that it's, it's going to be a path kind of paved with blood. Um, I think he's going to have to make the hard choice here. Uh, that's kind of who he is as a character. And um, I think that's really just going to be the end. And nobody should be surprised by that. Uh, it's no. been a very bloody show all the way through. And it kind of ending in blood and fire uh, is is just the logical thing to happen here. So I think mm -hmm. um, I think John is my favorite to win the throne. Uh, I think that a lot more characters are going to die here in the final episode. Uh, but I think that it's going to end in a way that definitely opens it up for some spinoff series. We already have a prequel series in the work, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if maybe we see something after the fact, too. All right, that's cool. Okay, so um, this is just what I've heard on the final season so far. So from what I understand, this last episode 
uh cersei and jamie died right uh they look to have died yes Okay, so it doesn't show them dying, but... It kind of does, but they've done things like this before where they could potentially live. Um, it's presumed that they're dead, yes. Okay, so kind of like the Hound where we all thought that he was dead, but he really wasn't. Yeah, yep. Okay, okay. All right, so that... Okay, and and they've been such a big part of the series the entire way, so I, I definitely could see them making an appearance in the final episode. Um, okay, and then from what I understand, Daenerys sent her dragons to attack uh king's landing king's uh Land? yeah actually Daenerys only has one dragon left the other two dragons have fallen in battle at this point um okay she... I, I knew the one did in the first fight with the white walkers yes uh she basically uh the the people kind of surrendered and she just went ahead and burned the whole city to the ground and started just flaming innocence all over the place so uh, it's kind oh. of a mass massacre. Okay, and that's that definitely sounds like a thing that John wouldn't be cool with. So do you think there's a little tension going on there now? Oh, absolutely. And it seems like a lot of the characters have kind of resigned to um, picking the side that isn't hers at this point. I don't nec- right. know necessarily they're on John's side as he hasn't really established himself one way or the other, but he does call a retreat that seems pretty significant uh, to mm-hmm. him kind of... Uh, disobeying her orders or so uh so we'll see where it goes um i'm thinking that this final episode is gonna be pretty bloody and my prediction is that daenerys dies by john's hand yeah uh just from what i've heard that definitely sounds like the thing they're setting up here uh which is man uh, i know there's been a lot of complaints and everything but just having her out of nowhere like just kill off innocence like that I, that doesn't really make much sense to me i know she's had things in the past where she's attacked people but they she always seemed to think they were deserving uh yes and no uh, when when uh when are you caught up to do, do you know what season I, i'm up up until the start of this last season okay uh her character has been one that uh she has been pretty self-serving uh, she hasn't really acted in a lot of others' interests unless it kind of aligns with her best interests. And so even though, yes, she she was the breaker of chains and she rec- rescued all these slaves, uh, that was kind of necessary for her to come up with an army and kind of mm-hmm. build reserves so that she could take Westeros over. Uh, okay. And so it kind of fits her character. I mean, from the start, she's always been saying, you know, blood and fire – uh, yeah. I will rain hell on King's Landing and take it by force, and I don't know that it seems super out of character for her. No, no. My my thing is though is that I I don't know. Uh, I I completely agree with you that she. I didn't really think about it that way, where everything she did was kind of to uh, benefit herself. But it was. I just always had. I I guess. I I I just really need to catch up on this season. Absolutely. But like you, you I sure would just. Do. I was just thinking like. Her and John, like, they obviously know they're related now, and they had that thing going on. Uh, and it seemed like she had the goodwill of uh, Tyrion and everything, like he was all in on her. But it, it just seems like such an odd move for her to just randomly throw all that away right at the end here. You know, I think the motivation for her at this point is that she did kind of abandon those uh, tendencies where she just kind of took everything by fire and blood um, and kind of sacrificed her uh, her own purpose to fight for somebody else's, in which case it was kind of the North uh, fighting for the good of West- Westeros against the White Walker army. Um, mm-hmm. And she kind of, you know, put a halt to her own ambitions for everybody else. And she came out uh, kind of being the person that turned the tides of that battle and... In the end, what did she get for it? You know, she lost uh, one of her dragons. Another one of her dragons was severely injured. She lost major, major parts of her army, and nobody thanked her for it uh, when it came down to it. You know, nobody was like, oh, Daenerys was our savior. You know, she expected to come out on the other side of that as Mm -hmm. the queen, as people thought she was the queen, uh, and that didn't happen. So I can understand how at this point, you know, the one time she did kind of self-sacrifice, it totally 
uh, screwed her over, essentially. And I think that that's kind of that character motivation for uh, being the person who she said she was going to be for seven seasons. Okay. All right. No, I, I got you. Uh, definitely something that I got to catch up on because I, I do love Game of Thrones. I just don't have HBO. <laughs> you know, controversies aside and all of the other stuff aside, it's just real good television, uh, and it's definitely worth the watch. Just from a cinemagraphic uh, standpoint, uh, the videography is amazing. Uh, the audio is great. Check it out. It's real good. Yeah. All right. Awesome. All right. So that does it for episode 60 of the Pixel Street Podcast this week. Woohoo. I'm John Hansen. You can find me at Revic Shadows on Twitter. Uh, you can also find my YouTube at youtube.com slash johngw92 or just search Revic Shadows. Uh, I should be putting up some uh, videos here pretty soon on E3 predictions. I did recently put up an article on Square Enix predictions for E3 on cultureofgaming.com, so you can check there. Connor, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter under at the real Birch. That's Birch without an I, uh, so B-R-C-H. I'm also on Mixer by Birch, uh, again, without the I. Uh, there's no I in team, and so there's no I in my name. All right. And Joel is at Joel or at Campo63. Be sure to uh, tweet uh, Remembrance, tweet at him. Uh, let him know that you're thinking about him when he was alive. So thanks so much for watching, guys. We will see you next week. Bye.